Anyone can see the code. You can make any kind of changes you want, and it's always free. Okay, the, the most well-known example of open source is the Linux operating system. Um, another very well-known example is the Apache web server, which is, this is what's running this website. Um, doesn't belong to any company. Nobody makes any money on it. And the successful open source projects tend to be very good because people work on it out of curiosity and out of their desire to make it better, not because some manager is standing over them saying, you have to do this. So CVS is open source. It's very widely used. Um, CVS typically, mo most software systems have some source files that are more closely related than others. You probably know that. CVS typically manages groups of files together and it uses the, a directory tree to segregate files into different groups. Now, you're going to use CVS to submit your homework assignments and CVS will store your homework assignments and everyone else's in what's called a repository. Basically, it's like a database. Um, it's different from a database in that if you make revisions, if you make changes to a file and submit it again, you can get back either version. And you can trace the changes from one version to another. This is not so important for your homework, but it's very important for, for source code, where if somebody made a change today and all of a sudden the software is crashing, you want to be able to go back and say, well, where is the difference between yesterday's version, which did not crash, and today's version, which is crashing? So we've, we're setting it up so that each student is going to have his or her, her own sub-project, your own directory. And when you submit your homework, it'll basically go into that part of the CVS repository. Now, in order to get going with this, you need to do a couple of things. The first thing is that you have to set up an account on Windu, on the CVS server. And part of the web page is devoted to setting up the account. If you go back to the Software Engineering Class Resources page and click on Student Account Setup, it's a typical web form. You need to fill in all of the fields. Um, particular importance, your student ID number should go in this field. Your email address should go here. And the system will automatically generate a username for you, which is the same as your email address, except wherever the at sign was, it will replace that with an underscore. Because um, us usernames in, in Unix and Linux cannot include an at sign. An at sign is a special character. You'll also need to select a password and retype it to make sure that you got it right. And most of you, I assume, are enrolled for, registered for credit, but if there's anyone who's auditing and submitting homework or auditing and not submitting homework, you would, you would change your status to that. It's very important. You won't be able to do anything else in the course or submit any homework until you've gone through and set up an account for yourself. You fill in the data and you click on Submit. Now, Kurt told you that this course is in English, Thanks to Kunvarin, though, we do have help in Thai, except I don't, know if this, I don't know if this browser is set up to display Thai. No, it isn't. Just a second here. There we go. There you go. Which is really small here, um, but presumably you can make it bigger on your own on your own um, machines. Or maybe you don't need the help. I mean, it just explains what each field is for. Because it is important that you get this right. Remember your username, okay? And remember your password. You're going to need that to submit your homework. Okay, so that's basically what this says. You have to set up an account. Your account will not be created right away, okay? The way the system works is it batches together a bunch of account creations, so it may take as much as a half an hour or an hour 
before the system gets around to creating the next batch of accounts. So you should be able to leave here and go fill in this form, but you probably won't be able to use your account until, like, say, tonight or tomorrow, just so you know that. So the first thing you need is an account. The next thing you need is this, what's called the CVS client. The way that CVS works is it stores all of the files, all of the source files, or in this case, all of your homework files on the server, in this case, window. But you can send files to the server from any computer running any of several operating systems if you just have this one little client program. It's just one program called cvs.exe. So we're going to set up all of the computers in the lab up on the eighth floor so that they have a CVS client on them, but you may want to download the CVS client yourself and put it on your own computer. So going back to the website, that's what the software download section is. This is where we're going to be putting the tools that Kurt was talking about that you're going to be using during the course, and the first one is CVS. So the simplest way to do this, well, you can wait until we put it on the lab machines. As you can see, it's um, a little bit under one megabyte. So it's not tiny, but it shouldn't take too long over a dial-up line. The other thing that you should get is this batch file, which is not at all big, called pass.bat, because that will help you set up the environment for CVS, for running CVS. So just download those two files, and it's recommended that you put them in a, in, in a directory on your own machine called bin32. I don't know how important that is. I think, actually, that the batch file, this pass.bat, assumes that they're in bin32. But you can just look at this. It's just a little file. And you can so download, download those two files. Put, it put it, create a bin32 directory on your, on your system, on your own computer. Okay. I will show you what the situation is on this computer. Okay. So this is bin32 on this machine, and it's got the CVS.exe here and the paths.bat, okay? Now, the paths.bat simplifies. This, this slide here talks about what you would have to do if you did it manually. Um, the paths.bat makes it a little simpler. So we've created a, that isn't what I wanted to do. We've created a, test user in the system so I can show you how you would go about submitting a homework assignment with CVS. The first thing you have to do is to set up the environment. Oh, and I should say this, this user's name is, well, actually, it's not Yai, it's Lek. So this user, when she went in to create her account, she told us that her email address was lek at rornmail.co.th. When the system created the username, it was lek underscore. Okay. Now, so this username is the argument to this batch file. It tells it what to use to set up the, the environment variables. And when I run it, it shows you what it's doing. One thing that it does is it sets the path so that you can run CVS from anywhere. And the other is that it sets up this, thing, this, this environment variable called CVS root, which CVS uses to figure out what user is, wants to use the system. Okay, so, so far we've got create your account, wait a little bit, download CVS and the path.bat, execute path.bat to to basically set up your environment. And then you have to log into CVS. So the command is CVS login. I know this is kind of small, I, but it is all on the slides. 
And it will prompt you. It says logging in to lec underscore roarnmail.co.th at windu, blah, blah, blah. Asks you for the password. 